even in just a tenth degree sense. I don't want, that's not mine. That's, I do not know you. That I would repeat, would reject that. So I don't say anything one, one can do about it. I'm just saying that you can, and well, life is short, and all you can do, none of us are Martin Luther's who was a very, uh, um, who was a very defective person, he too, but uh, you know, he, met, he did achieve some, some great things, obviously. Uh, to expect any of us to have an effect is uh, almost impossible. The more people become aware of it, the more the groundswell will be to do something about it, to make Christianity what it ought to be. And I mean to say that I see Christianity as a <coughs> great product of Greco-Hellenistic world civilization. Um, and um, Christianity as we have it is um, the flowering to some extent of that civilization. I know it's built on a Jewish messianic uh, root, but it, it incorporates very little of the Jewish messianic root except the idea of messianism itself. So um, the Jamesian form is, of course, much more than that. So um, there's nothing wrong with any religion. I don't see anything wrong with Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism. Uh, I don't think paganism is necessarily wrong for pagans. I was in South India, and I, there's so much paganism you see there. It's astonishing, but uh, it's also very moving and um, attractive. So uh, I think the American Native religion was an impressive one, and so on. So not the ones where they're sacrificing people down the steps in the pyramids and uh, that Mel Gibson is going to make his next horrendous movie about. Uh, <laughs> he loves gore and blood. Uh, total fascination with it. Uh, which is why I won't go to see his movie. Yeah. But, um, you know, the, the Plains Indians and so on. <laughs> Although my wife always tells me, ah, I don't believe that stuff about Central America. That would be propaganda trying to make the people there look bad. And I, I can't... Uh, I can't judge, I wasn't there. There uh, seemed to be some of that cruelty there, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I think all religions are good because they help people get through a difficult world in where we only have a limited lifespan, uh, insofar as they don't create hatred against other peoples, and insofar as they're not built on uh, a seed that makes you automatically dislike someone else who isn't a member of your group. So other than that, I mean, they're all they're all helpful in helping people get through what is a difficult thing, life itself. Anyway, uh, that's why I asked the pause. But that's any more questions about the exam? Uh, Phineas, we just did. Uh, what are the short answers? I don't think that the other short answers were a problem. The essays didn't seem to be a problem. Any questions about the exam? All right, now I told you to stop. Get me to stop gabbing. And I said I wanted to do that section on uh, declaring all foods pure. You guys are quicker than me. Can you find it quicker than I can find it where it is? Because I'm going to have to skip around and, and uh, do the... Um, no, I'm looking in uh, the Gospels where uh, he said this declaring all foods pure, where he's talking about the toilet bowl and what comes in the, out of the mouth going down the toilet bowl. Come on, you're faster than me. I'll look in the Gospels, you look in the Harmony. And we ought, I should have it marked here someplace. See who finds it first. Uh, come on, Matthew, I'll find you. Should be around the 16, 17. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Mm -hmm. How do you guys make me do all the work? I'm, I'm just a teacher. You're supposed to be the workman. Here it is, I think I found it. Matthew 15. Okay, let's find Matthew 15 in our, um, in our, in our harmonies here. Yeah, this is it, this is it, this is, this is the baby. Okay, so let's, let's look at this. Uh, let's see what, I always like to look at what comes first, before that. Oh, before that is Peter sinking into the Sea of Galilee. And uh, in chapter 14, and of course Herod's birthday party uh, um, that we have at the beginning of chapter. It's always interesting to see what, I mean, it's so interesting. Each thing leads into a new thing. <coughs> it's so well constructed, some of these passages and materials. 
Uh, then uh, notice, for instance, in chapter 14, after Herod's birthday party and the killing of John the Baptist, Jesus' disciples come to him, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then you get the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. It's also about food. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, bring them to me, is this Matthew. And after commanding the multitude to rest on the grass, uh, by the way, this is out in the wilderness. They've gone across the Sea of Galilee and they've gone out into the wilderness. Uh, so it's one of those wilderness signs episodes that Josephus is all complaining about. Took them out to show them the signs of their impending freedom or redemption, okay? And so it's a... Uh, and uh, he blessed them and broke them, and the disciples gave them uh, gave them to the multitude. Many of you realize the multitude is the rabbin, the masses in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And all ate and were satisfied, and they took up 12 baskets full of the pieces that were left over. Now here our writers love all these numbers, and actually uh, really do beguile your mind with all these numbers. And immediately Jesus made the disciples get into a ship, and he sent the multitudes away, and then he went up to the mountains, sort of like Moses. Uh, and then they saw him walking on the sea, and there was a storm, and um, uh, Peter comes out, and he wants to walk, and there was a violent wind, and uh, of course Peter gets the backhand of things as usual. Why does Peter always get the backhand of things? Because the writers here know that Peter was a lukewarm Paulinist. And this is where, and you say, how do you see through that? How can you see that? Well, it may not be there. Maybe I'm just saying it. You have to judge. I, I, that's my, my take. And, you know, you can say, you can say, oh, well, you're reading too much into this. Yes, you're, 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 you're perfectly uh, within your rights to say that. Absolutely. That's you to determine for yourself. I'm just challenging you, making you think about this. You know, most people just read this, oh, uh -huh. Yes, and then Peter walked on the waters and tried to walk, and Jesus said he sank, and Jesus said, oh, you have so little faith, and then they just go on. They don't think anything about it. They just let it, they just absorb it. But I don't look at it like that. I see a lot of this as polemics, one party arguing with another party. And here, of course, the point is that Peter is weak in calling faith, because it's Paul who has a doctrine that your faith saves you not your works. And it's James, if you know the other letters, who attacks the man, the foolish, empty man, James 2, who, I can read it to you, and I've done it before, but I'll do it again. Uh, and uh, Most people take this, now we don't know if it's an authentic Jamesian letter, and people argue with that, but most agree it's in the school of James, 